I'm teaching basic English for grade 12 or Matryom 6. And today's lesson is about model of deduction and probability. I'll tell you the objective of this lesson first. The objective of this lesson is students are able to write sentences using models of deduction and probability correctly. First of all, I would like you to read these sentences. That must be the main entrance. I can't see people queuing to get in. I've lost my keys. They might be at work or they could be in the car. He must have flown through the window. You can notice the word in purple color. Must, might, and could. All of them are model. We use model for deduction in guessing if something is true using available information. And the model where we choose shows how certain we are about the possibility. And there are a lot of words that we can use as a model of deduction. But today, we will use these four words. Must, may, might, and can't. As I told you earlier that the model where we choose shows how certain we are about the possibility, right? And we will know the difference between these four words together. We use must as a model of deduction when we are sure that something is true. We are 100% sure that it is true. And we use may or might when we are not sure if something is true. And finally, we use can't for something that we are sure that it is impossible or we are sure that it is not true. And today, you will learn how can we use models of deduction about the present and future, and models of deduction about the past. Let's begin with how can we use models of deduction about the present and future. When you want to guess something about the present and future, to form a sentence, we need a subject followed by models. You choose one, must, may, might, or can't, based on your certainty and followed by verb infinitive or base form of verb. For example, that must be her house because I always see her in front of that house. She might be stuck in the traffic. That's why she's late. Or she can't know about the complaint because she looks happy. And when you want to make a guess about the past, you need to form a sentence like this. Subject, followed by model, and helping verb have, followed by past participle. For example, an earthquake, that must have been terrifying. The earthquake happened earlier, and the speaker guessed that, that must be terrifying. We don't know for sure, that Alex broke the coffee table. That might have been the dog. Someone broke the coffee table and we're not sure that Alex was the one who broke the coffee table. We guessed it might be the dog. How did she fail the exam? She can't have studied very much. She failed the exam and the speaker believes that she didn't study very much. That's why she failed the exam. Let's summarize what we have learned today. Today, we have learned how can we use models of deduction and probability in guessing about the present and future and in guessing about the past. When we want to guess something about the present and future, we need to form a sentence, subject, followed by model, and verb infinitive. For example, this book must be hers. There is her name on its cover. And when we want to get something about the past, we need a subject, followed by model, and helping verb have, followed by past participle or verb break. For example, 
The ship must have climbed through the window. It is opened. Let's review what we have learned by doing this exercise. Find the correct word to complete these sentences. Number one, come in and sit down. You blank be tired after the journey. And first of all, you have to think about the present or future or the past. Does the speaker talk about the present situation or past situation? And you can see, come in and sit down. It is an imperative, right? An imperative is something that the speaker wants someone to do at that time. So the speaker is talking about the present. When we want to form a sentence, we need a subject followed by modal and infinitive form of verb. All right, and in here you have the subject already, which is you, and you have the infinitive form already, that is be. Now you have to find the correct modal verb for this sentence. You have to think about the speaker's certainty. In this case, the speaker might see his or her face looks tired, so he is sure that he or she is tired. When you are sure that something is true, what modal verb will you use? That's right, must. So the correct word to fill in this sentence is must. Come in and sit down. You must be tired after the journey. Very good. Let's move to number two. Who is this coat? It blank B post. It's way too small for him. You have to think about the tense first. Does the speaker talk about the person or the past? And you can notice the verb in the sentence is. It means that the speaker is talking about the person, right? And now you have to think about the speaker's certainty. It seems that the speaker knows Paul very well, so he is sure that the code is not Paul's. Because as he knows, Paul's is bigger than this coat. All right. When you are sure that something is impossible, or when you're sure that something is not true, what model word will you use? The correct word to put in this sentence is can't. Whose is this coat? It can't be Paul's. It's way too small for him. Excellent. Next, sentence number three. I blank left my wallet in the restaurant. I paid for the taxi home afterwards. Is the speaker talking about the person or past situation? Yes, he is talking about the past situation. As you can notice, the word paid. Which is the past tense form of verb in the sentence. And now you have to think about the speaker's certainty. Is the speaker sure that he didn't leave his wallet in the restaurant? Yes, he is sure that he didn't leave his wallet in the restaurant because when he went out of the restaurant, he paid for the taxi home. All right, and when you are sure that something is not true or something is impossible, you have to use the modal verb can't. Very good. And when you talk about the past situation, you have the subject followed by modal and helping verb have followed by past participle. Right. So in this sentence, you have to complete the sentence. By putting the word can't together with helping verb have, very good. So the correct sentence is: I can't have left my wallet in the restaurant. I paid for the taxi home afterward. All right, everyone. We have learned about how can we use models of deduction about the present and future. Together with models of deduction about the past. All right, don't forget to do your exercise and practice more about models of deduction. And see you again in the next lesson. Goodbye and take care.